What is up, everybody? It is me, Duke Farley, back at it again here on Lost at Sea, and I am joined again this season, thankfully, by the two-time champ champ winner, Mr. Edmund. How are you doing? Glad to see you, you know, came back to talk about a sentence again, man. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm doing good. I just got home from Chicago, where I went to Lollapalooza with Matthew Papa himself. Um, I got I got this little bucket hat from there. Giving festival attire since I'm talking about La Palooza. I look like I'm about to go to a festival, but yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good too. My hat is from Fort Lauderdale. Ooh, I went there recently. I've never yeah, been that's there. Cool, but <laughs> I wear it to the gym sometimes. <laughs> We spent um, way too much on this hat, so. Yeah, this one was about 20, 25 bucks, so. <laughs> um, but anyway. I don't want to tell you how much I paid. I don't know if I want to know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm glad we can get together and talk again about Ascendance Live Season 2. Um, mm. I'm going to briefly kind of cover the last two episodes. I wasn't able to put out a podcast last week um, regarding Paul. And I just wanted to give him, you know, his little, just a little something, something on the pod. I, you can see his exit interview, which is on the channel as well, if you want to take a look at that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to dive in. But first of all, Edmund, how have you been enjoying just like the overall season since the last time we spoke? Like, what have you been liking? What have you not been liking? <laughs> um, I I definitely think season two is a step up from season one. I like to see some of like the same challenges repeated, but also like introducing some new ones, but also still like classics from like reality shows that we love. Um, so I've been liking the challenge aspect a little more. Um, I still am having some trouble like really finding out who is super close with who like I mean I know they spelled out a lot more alliances this season for us in the edit but I want more of those like one-on-one -on -one relationships shown um but of course it's hard to get everything on camera yeah absolutely um your season you know you guys kind of had the duckies which was definitely the dominating alliance uh of the season um <clears throat> And now we see this four-person alliance that's been formed between Thomas, Taisha, Zoe, and Drew. Um, but besides that, there's not really <laughs> an like an, a group or an opposition for that. So are you surprised that like we're not seeing that's like the only thing that we've seen? I definitely think that's like the strongest alliance of this season because they're like put in pictures of them from finale and the previously on and I know during my finale I took two pictures that was with the duckies and my real final three with Jake and Sarah which were like the two alliances I cared about so I definitely think that alliance is like the most solid um, and I would expect to have like the biggest edit in terms of an alliance I don't know how much longevity they have though um i think i'll get into it more but i think some of their choices are a little questionable and i'm just gonna give a disclaimer before we get into this episode um i have a lot of thoughts um i get paid to give my thoughts duke provides a hefty check and um yeah these are my opinions i overanalyze everything which is why i have an opinion about everything so just a little disclaimer if I say something you might not like. <laughs> it's a good disclaimer. It's good to know, let the people know that, you know, you are paid to give your opinion and it's mm -hmm. only your opinion. It might be the same as others, it might be different. So mm -hmm. always good to let the, the viewers in on that. Um, but I want to start off with Paul's round where he gets the boot. We see, um, you know, a duo kind of, captain challenge and then the captains that win that are going to be the people that you know divide up the teams and we get marvin and kennedy winning what are your thoughts on kennedy this is i've been looking at my charts and kennedy now has four captain wins at this point of the game um mm -hmm. 
are you enjoying watching Kennedy? And do you think she has what it takes to go to the, get to the end? No, <laughs> um, I don't think Kennedy is going to make it to the end, especially after this last episode. I think Marvin and Kennedy are like just dead people walking. Um, I don't know. I got some little insider tea. Um, I won't reveal my sources, but um, basically I just, I didn't really get this from the edit, but apparently Marvin and Kennedy were like running the entire pre-jury portion of the game. I mean, of course, because with all of Kennedy's captain wins, she had a lot more like say in what was going on in the rounds. Um, but I've been watching a lot of this season under the influence. So maybe I'm just not picking up on that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think that Kennedy is a good player, but I think when she's safe or she has power, um, she kind of loses like that gamey talk or like that je ne sais quoi when she talks. It's just kind of more outright and it's like comes off um, kind of too forward for my liking. Like, I don't know how I would receive that in that moment. Um, for example, like the way that she talked to Melissa when um, they were all in that group. I don't really remember what was said because it was a few weeks ago, but she just kind of was like, well, what do you want to do? Like you're on the chopping block. So tell us what you want. Um, instead of kind of nurturing that number just in case something wild happened and she happened to stay in the game. Marvin, on the other hand, I don't know how I feel about Marvin. Um, I'm indifferent. Marvin seems to be holding a lot of power, like literal powers at this point. Yeah. Um, and in this episode, we kind of see him find that second portion of the pendant. Yes. Uh, so he's he's packing some heat there it seems like yeah I think they if they want to make it to the end they really have to use that pendant accordingly and in a way to flip the game um if they have the awareness of that four-person alliance obviously I would try to do that um especially with like kind of the stragglers like Hako Chris and Wesley and even kind of Erica um I just I think there's like this dominant four person alliance, the duo of Marvin and Kennedy, and then everyone else is just kind of still vibing, <laughs> uh, which is like getting them along. Uh, but I think they need to kind of get together and flip the game if they want, which I could see coming. Do you think that's something? Because I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, like the four person alliance seems to have like their shit together. They seem to be working as like a unit. Um, but then the people, like you said, that are just vibing on the outside, do you think they're going to, like, come together? <sighs> mm, I don't know. Because it would have to be Marvin and Kennedy, Hakro Chris, who Jodely, Wet and Wesley and Erica. That's everyone else in the game, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, especially because of um, Hakko, Chris, Jodely, and Taisha's alliance. I think Taisha is like set up in the best spot ever right now. Honestly, to me, Taisha is like playing the best kind of floater game. And I'm not saying that in a shady way, because I think I played very floater like season one. Um, she's got her foundations. She's not getting her nose in too much business. And she's just kind of got like gathering the info and doing whatever she pleases with it because she's not in trouble. Um, yeah, Taisha is playing really well. Not her name hasn't been up at all this entire game um before we move on to this latest episode let's just talk about mm -hmm. paul paul was somebody <laughs> that um coming into the game i know when we were doing our draft uh people had some concerns with paul going in but thought that mm -hmm. he had you know he could do well if put in the right position i think paul definitely overperformed my expectation i don't know about you yes. what did you think of paul i think it was kind of a consensus that like paul would be kind of an earlier boot but i think paul lasted way longer than I would have expected. Um, I was more so ex expecting like him to get like third or fourth boot, but still I think Paul had some of the most like iconic confessionals all season <laughs> and Paul was just funny. I am, and I don't know why people didn't receive him well more, more well, but I really loved Paul as a character. And again, you, if you guys want to catch that interview, it's up on the channel. It's one of the later videos. I talk with Paul, all things Paul. So go check that out. But let's dive into this latest one. Um, the boot, obviously, is Mr. Car Car Hype Train. Got, a, mm -hmm. got that. Um, 
lot to discuss here. We see Thomas get his first captain win. Um, and then we see Carson kind of plead for Marvin to play his power of uh, the overthrow or whatever mm. that is. I mean, all things even, Carson ends up leaving. So what did you think of the power play? Well, I think if they weren't trying to be obvious before, then they were definitely being obvious then um, in a room full of everybody. Um, so I don't know if it was the smartest play, but especially because, yeah, like you said, he kind of forced Marvin's hand to play the power and it ended up screwing him. So uh, that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. But I was under the impression that they were just like straight out targeting Kennedy and Marvin now. Um, but apparently Carson was the target the whole time. Um, which I think makes sense if you're going to target those three, because I think Kennedy and Marvin are a lot closer. So you can still use that like duo as a shield. Um, but I think it's, I don't know. See, like my thing with this alliance is I think their targets are questionable. I don't think they should have gotten out Melissa as early as they did because they need more than just one duo as a shield. You know what I mean? And Melissa was obviously that like next big house target. And now they just got rid of Carson. So I would start eliminating, if I were them, those people that are kind of just straggling along. Um, yeah. So Thomas picks Carson first in this instance. So you think that he maybe should have went after somebody else, maybe like somebody more on the outskirts, are you saying? Yeah. I mean, with that team, obviously it was their entire alliance plus Wesley and Carson. So in that scenario, I prefer... Carson to leave <laughs> just because I want to see more of Wesley because um, like I said I just feel like Wesley's just kind of been doing his own thing try not to get too involved where I feel like Carson has kind of had his storyline developed I want to see more of Wesley's storyline develop as a viewer um, so in that scenario no but I think it's smart to, ta to target those people that are uh, kind of just not really involved in all the drama Right. And it's going to be interesting to see where Wesley falls in this whole thing. If there is like a counter alliance that's built mm -hmm. for, you know, the alliance that we see. Um, but we get a fun little survivor challenge where you have to run around <laughs> and catch the other people with jugs of water, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, a couple fun memes, I guess. Taisha <laughs> falling was fun. Mm -hmm. Poor Taisha. Uh, if I face planted on camera for a YouTube series for everyone to see. You're getting a cease and desist from my lawyer. Is that the right thing? Like you, you're not feeling, you're not putting up that footage, okay? <laughs> like I don't want to fall on my face uh, on YouTube. But and then, and then the instant replay. Right. Uh, they clowned her. They really got her. <laughs> it's tough, but good sport. Good sport. Um so obviously that team ends up losing and they go after Carson, but mm -hmm. Carson kind of puts up a, like a fight. He, he, you know, goes for the power, um, finds a steal of vote. We didn't get to see it on camera, but we heard it. I think he yeah. found it in a fireplace. So what did you think of his strategy here to kind of, the first thing he does is kind of try to pull Drew and Wesley off to the side and say, you know, I got something. You guys should vote with me. I'm not telling you what I have, but do you think that's like something that, <laughs> what do you think of that? To me, if I am Wesley and Drew in that situation, I'm going to take that as a threat, not as like, you want to work with me and like actually build a relationship to move forward. I would be like, excuse me, <laughs> what'd you say? um but yeah I definitely think Carson could have played it a little differently I don't know how well his awareness is on the whole four-person alliance I think it's something that's kind of known I don't think they're super secret um when I spoke to Carson um which you could also check on the channel um he said that he his awareness at that point in time was everybody in that alliance except for Drew he didn't think that Drew was a part of that that's why he spoke to drew and wesley because mm -hmm. he perceived them as being on the outs kind of mm -hmm. um but at that point i think he's he mentioned that you know those people were pretty well known as being as working together 
Yeah, and I think to my perception from watching it, I would pick Drew to be the one most likely to flip as well. Like if I were to be a player, I would be like, okay, I can probably make like game logic sense to Drew and try and get him to like make a big move. Um, But yeah, I think the whole like, I'm not telling you what I have. So just vote with me and like, that's how it's going to go. I was just like, oof, Carson, let's, let's, let's reverse here a little bit. Um, Let's approach the situation differently. Cause I think if he just kind of talked game to these two, I think, I think they're very like strategic thinking people to where if he was able to make the strategy make sense, they would actually kind of entertain the idea, especially because they could use still him as a target moving forward. It was, but it was tough, right? Because Drew mm-hmm. is actually a part of the alliance. So not only did he pick the wrong person to pull there, but like theoretically, the only other person that wasn't a part of that was Wesley, which was the other person he was trying to pitch, right? Yeah, but he needed two, at least two. And I don't think Thomas and Zoe are just clearly together in my eyes. So I would not even entertain that idea. I would probably maybe even pitch, hey, they're super tight. We should maybe split them up. Um, But yeah, I would go for Drew or Taisha if I needed that second vote. Yeah. Um, That doesn't work, obviously. And he (laughs) then resorts to the, I'm going to sit in the elimination area and I'm just going to hope to God they think I have a pen and a power. What did you think? little awkward there during that episode so awkward you took the words out of my mouth I literally like kind of had to skip through it because I was just like this is I can't like I was getting like secondhand embarrassment I was just like I I could not that it was so awkward I could not watch it because it was just (laughs) they're just all sitting there staring at each other and at that point just end the clock early (laughs) let's get to the vote um but yeah um it was definitely weird how they all approached him um they kind of just like took their turns one-on-one going up to him and like having their own little like spiel but um I do want to talk about Zoe because I think she is the most I'm the I'm most shocked by Zoe from like the beginning of the season the meet meets I didn't expect Zoe to have such a strong grasp on the game um a great social game you know what I mean and I think she's doing great but like I said, I just don't know if their order of targets is going to help them actually make the end. Um, but I, she's like shocked me a lot. Um, so for Zoe in particular, <laughs> excuse me, in particular, what, what do you think was, you don't think this was the best move for her? I think it started with Melissa. Um, I think, I really think Melissa was right when she said, if you vote me out, it's really going to be a a detriment to a lot of your games. Like you are going to regret it. And I think that is going to ring true in the end, um, depending on how everything shakes out. uh, Because I just think it was a little too early to vote out Melissa. Um, But we'll see, of course, maybe I'll eat my words, but I don't know, just like the way she was talking to Carson, she, trying to give him like the puppy dog eyes and like say like, please don't vote for me. You know what I mean? Just cause she didn't want to vote, but she like knew she wasn't even going to entertain the idea of not voting him. That's why I'm glad Carson kind of threw it back at her and was like, girl, be real. You know what I mean? Like let's cut the bullshit, which is what I like. Um, cause I think she was just more so worried about not getting a vote on her name. Right. And she ended up getting two, so. Mm-hmm tough but Mm. um she is still in the game carson is not carson was Mm -hmm. eliminated first juror so he the hype train made it all the way to jury (laughs) yeah i i didn't think i going into the season i did not think carson would go as far as he did um so he outperformed my expectation number one um but first juror now he's going to be casting a vote for a winner right so he kind of sets the tone for the jury so what do you mm-hmm. think Carson leaving the way he does? Do you think he's pissed at anyone? Do you think he like, is he favoring anybody at this point? I know it's early, but. Um, I think just think he feels a little disrespected, especially I would in that moment. If everyone's, if I'm sitting in the elimination chair and everyone's just kind of sitting there staring at me, making sure that I don't go off and talk to people. Like you don't need to babysit me, but um yeah, I would feel a little disrespected. And I think he kind of touched on that. I forget his exact goodbye words, but um, 
I don't think he'd be he'll be a super bitter juror. I just think he'll have some shit he needs to hash out in the end and kind of call people out on their shit, which I think Carson will do. Carson gives good TV, so Carson great gave great TV. And again, if you want to check out that exam review on the channel. But um, but yeah, so that's basically what happens in this episode. We see a power get claimed, a power get played. Um any thoughts about moving forward? Like who you, you mentioned Taisha being in a great position. You mm-hmm. mentioned Marvin and Kennedy being uh, pretty, you know, t- like targets at this point, it seems like. Um, what do you think? So moving forward, who do you think's in trouble other than those two, I guess? I think Thomas and Zoe. I think the minute that they get rid of that duo, people are going to look right at them, especially because they've now been kind of walking around the house openly strategizing and not really caring about trying to hide it. Um, At least that's what I would be trying to split up at this point in the game. Uh, But my thing always is, is if you're going to split up a duo, you got to get them out back to back. Otherwise, the other one is just going to coast right to the end. Um, So I'm hoping they get out Kennedy and Marvin back to back. So that way uh, they don't cause any ruckus. Uh, But it's just weird. Like, I just, I can't, I feel like I can't make any great judgments because of how many kind of just like free agents there are. And it's just like, who's going to be the one to scoop them up and make the big move to flip the game. And, you know, so I don't know. And I think, I don't know if Taisha would really take the initiative to do something um, so performative in like a game aspect to be like a huge move. But um, I think she has the most connections right now to do that if she wanted to. So like playing like in the future a little bit, do you think say this duo gets eliminated Kennedy and Marvin back to back? Do you think at that point, that's when we see kind of a shift from the the main Alliance in the game where we're going to start, you know, eating our own, or do you think maybe a couple more people need to leave before that happens? Well, if they get Kennedy and Marvin out back to back, then we're at final eight. So they're half of the game. Um, so I think that then they can run with it. Uh, that's why I'm just a little worried about them now because like this weird like middle region of like 12 to nine, um, they don't have the outright majority. So they kind of have to rely on their outside connections. Um, but if they get out Kennedy and Marvin, I, I could see them taking it. I don't know if anyone's really going to flip though at, at that point, I wouldn't. So there's four people in that too. So like, who do you think that benefits the most if they go to the end with their four? If that four got to the end, I would vote for Thomas. Because I think Thomas is really the one kind of narrating the strategy of the season so far. Um, Just really giving like in-depth strategical scenarios and like why he doesn't want certain things to happen. Um, so he's giving me the best winning game. I mean, obviously Drew has found like powers. Um, I just don't know what Drew has like done with that capital yet, but I think he might use them to be more flashy and get those kind of game winning moves on his resume. I don't remember exactly how long into the season for you guys a pendant got played, Um, Mm -hmm. but we have two out there now. And we're mm-hmm. at the final 10, I think. Yeah. So Marvin's in trouble, it seems like. You think that somebody might get a pendant of powered out of the game soon? I do. I think it'll be next episode. Um, I think Kennedy and Marvin are going to get targeted. Um, now, if they play the pendant correctly is another question. But I think it would be great because I want to see a power shift. So, um. I would like to see Kenny and Marvin save themselves just for the like TV aspect. I know I was like kind of talking about them earlier and saying like, I don't think they're doing the best, but um, I want to see that power shift. You know, you don't want to just see a steamroll. Um, so I'm excited for that. And also in season one, Erica and Stephanie played their pendants back to back at, I think the final nine, the final nine. Um, and then the only other idol or pendant, sorry, in the entire game was Peyton's public pendant. So I think them two having 
secret pendants is really going to shake up the game this time more so than it did season one because it was just public knowledge right yeah i um ex- am really excited if that were to happen um it'll be like a, a fun little moment i guess um to see somebody get <laughs> and who do you around. who do you think they would target i think they would target thomas or zoe yeah i mean you would imagine um it's tough to tell who Marvin and Kennedy are like super close with super close with, but also super against at this point, you know, we know yeah. Kennedy mm-hmm. wanted to get Melissa out for the longest time, but now I'm not really sure exactly who I'm not sure if they're aware of the four person Alliance either. So. Yeah, that's true. And like, honestly, we haven't talked about hot girl Chris like at all or Joe Lee, but hot girl Chris, I just love hot girl Chris. Like, Hako Chris walks around the house, does his own thing, pulls the camera with him and says, follow me, I'm gonna go look for my power. Like, screw all the other bitches going crazy. I'm gonna do my own thing, um, which I love. Plus, it was like kind of like a season one moment when I'm like, what box? And he's just like, oh, who got the, who got, who got the half pendant? Who got the half pendant in the, in the, in the potted plant over here in the corner? <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I think publicizing powers makes it so much easier to strategize around. So then there's not that, like that paranoia. Um, plus it shifts targets. It gets the attention off of you. So I think it's really smart for him. Looks like Hot Girl Chris also went back into the fireplace as if he thought <laughs> there was another power in there. He's like, he got some ash on him and he was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I know. I was like, Chris, you are crazy. Why are you playing with like the firewood ash? I would... I could not do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, is there anything else that you want to talk about regarding Ascendance up to this point? I mean, I think we covered the past couple episodes pretty well. What did you think about, I think two people this round, Carson and Joda Lee, went into where the pendant was, where Drew found it. But they didn't say anything. Like, they didn't... If you So I actually... Carson brought that up on his exit interview. Um, oh, okay. He found the box, the actual box that the pendant yeah. was in. And he actually thought there was that, that meant like something. Um, so I think he was aware. I think he's, a, he was aware at that point that there was something in there it got taken in and whatnot. Um, but he's out. So I, I don't know what Joe Lee thinks about it. I don't know if anybody's been speculating about, a pendant of power at all so right it seems there like hasn't been a lot of i got off scot free there yeah there hasn't been a lot of talks about the pendants themselves besides the one half going missing but it's like how many times this season have people said oh this power is missing i knew it was there but i didn't grab it <laughs> and i'm just like why didn't y'all grab it yeah like when erica said that she saw the the power in the plant but she didn't want to grab it yes and then hako chris said he knew that the power was in the fireplace and he didn't grab it i was just like what are y'all doing how do you got marvin and then you got marvin just pulling shit out in public um right erica i think erica i don't know I don't, I don't think she's drawing dead at this point, but I think that she's been pretty passive with like her allies going home early mm-hmm. and she's not on the inside of this majority alliance. She's kind of like pretty close, close to them. I would say probably a one or two right outside of the four. Um, but I don't know. I could see, I could see her being a person that, is brought in once they try to cannibalize one another but Mm -hmm. besides that i don't see see much from erica other than that yeah i just i think she is in the position of danger of being like collateral if like something were to go a wall and they have no other plan i feel like they could all just kind of easily point the finger at her and just be like that's a, a happy medium let's just do that and move on to the next round with how fast paced everything is um but I don't know. I think she's like close with Drew, right? Close with Drew. She's played with Drew in the past before and they seem to have okay. been working together throughout. This yeah, game. I think that's who I see her talk the most with. So I don't know if like Drew will like kind of rope her in, like you said, if they start to 
eat each other alive or what. I don't know. I'm excited because I think from here on out, every episode is going to be very interesting, especially with all the powers. And depending on how co-captain goes, like I know that screwed me over a few times in the first season. So seeing how people adapt to the co-captain twist and all that. Which I would assume is coming up this next episode. I, I, I would hope, I think individuals is probably right now, but I don't know for sure. How many are left? 10? 10. Yeah. Because ours didn't start until I think eight. Yeah. Because nine was sequence, I believe. Final nine. Um, That's right. But I don't know. I do not know. Do you think they'll still do two teams of five? For some reason, in my mind, I th- I thought this this next episode is going to be full individuals, um, mm-hmm. but now that I'm thinking about it, they did go pretty far into your season with teams, and uh, they still had teams here, so it might be another round, and then individuals at nine, because there's 18 contestants this season. Yeah. So the uh, thing that was different about my season, oh, well, you're talking about season one. I thought you were talking about the org. But um, like the thing about the org when I played was they would do teams, but then everyone would vote. So there could still be a whole team safe, but then everyone would vote. I would kind of like to see that dynamic um, because I know they haven't done that in a while. Because even when I was talking about it with Matthew Papa, he's like, we did not do that. We did not do that. I was like, girl, check the tapes. <laughs> you're saying that in season two of the org right yes mm-hmm. okay yeah because i've never i've never seen that on production for five through whatever we're at 11 mm-hmm. now yeah um that would be interesting i i don't i didn't know that that happened it's just more chaos and then like it was kind of how when they did the hierarchy challenge you know and how like a handful of them are safe but then like all those people are voting I right. just think it it forces people's hands to adapt, which I want to see more of that to see like who's really an outstanding player. You seem to be on the long lines of you want you want something to be shaken up soon. Oh, of course. I do not want to see a seam roll. Um, I don't know. I just I think it's time for some of these other people to kind of take control of the narrative. I feel like it's been kind of this four person alliance for a while now. Yeah. And I gotta be honest with you. I think it might be the four person alliance for a little bit longer until somebody steps up or pendants played by Marvin, hopefully correctly. Um, but other than that, I, I got nothing else. Yeah, that's good. Who do you think is going to win? We'll end with that. I think. If I were to call it today, I would say. I would say Drew. I'm going to agree with you on that one. I'm going to say Drew or I'm going to say Taisha. Those are my two. The reason why I want to say Taisha because I drafted Taisha and I haven't, I didn't draft Drew, but I think Taisha is going to come to a point probably around four or three where she needs to win a competition or she'll get eliminated because she'll win in the end. And I Mm -hmm. don't think she's going to win the competition but I don't know for sure. Yeah. My thing is, I think Taisha can get in a little trouble once she has to kind of show her cards with all of her connections. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. But yeah. And yeah, well, thank you so much, Edmund, for joining me tonight on Lost at Sea to talk about the past couple episodes of Ascendance Live. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And if you guys are watching this now, go ahead and tune into the episode tomorrow night, which will be at nine o'clock. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell us what your favorite part of the podcast is. Tell us who your winner pick is. Yes, put your winner pick in the comments. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 